Francis. And welcome in to Lad People Stadium as the rain falls down tonight. Our ball game tonight pitting the Baldwin County Tigers at 2-1 and 1-1 one and one and one in the area against the Rattlers of LaFleur at 2-2 two and two and also 1-2 and two in their area. Hi again everyone, Doug Holton along with Willie Gasson. Willie, a good ball game tonight. A little inclement weather, but that shouldn't affect things too much. When you talk about the LaFleur Rattlers, you have to talk about James Leatherwood. He's their all-purpose guy on offense. Yes, he is a dynamic player, probably about 6'2", and that's big for a running back. So you're going to look for him to get the ball a lot tonight because due to the weather, you can't expect for them to throw the ball a lot because I doubt if they practice with wet balls to get prepared for the night. And really, I don't think anyone was expecting it to rain tonight. Right. As far as the Baldwin County Tigers, the new head coach this year, and uh, Nate McMillan, coming from Daphne, where he was a defensive coordinator a year ago. He really has the people in Baymanette excited this year. Yes, he does. And I think one of the main things is he has a very young team, and they need that excitement right now. Because when you have a young team, they're prone to make mistakes because they haven't seen the action that they need to see. But I think tonight you're going to get some great football out of them because I think they're motivated and they feel like they stand a chance in this football game. All right. We'll uh, take a look at the two teams and have the opening kickoff for you in just a minute right here, so stay with us. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. We have holding on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We'll replay first down.
Team for the Tigers. First and ten ball in the county from their own 28 yard line. First and ten Tigers on their own 38 yard line. Judge on the carry for the Tigers. Delay a game against the offense, it remains fourth down. Okay, so
During the return, we have a block in the back on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down the floor. Leatherwood on the carry. Tackle made by number seven, Keyshawn Wright. First and ten, the four Rattlers from their own 24 yard line. play we had a block in the back that penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul it'll be on the 40 yard line it will result in the first down even though they had a penalty first down the floor Sacks on the play. Second down and 20 for the four Raptors from their own 30 yard line.
Green on the carry. Tackle made by number 45. Third down and 23 from the Florida Rattlers from their own 27 yard line. First and ten, Baldwin County Tigers from the Rattler 37 yard line. Hearing for the Raptors. Double made by number 94, Hunter Smith.
green on carry. Third down and 10 for the LaFleur Rattlers from their own 35 yard line. Association meeting will meet on Sunday evening, September 21st at 5 o'clock p.m. War High School. Great to be back on the air. All alumni we're have some technical difficulty. Now we're back, <laughs> and it's good to be back. It's always yes, good it to be back yes, on, it is. on a Thursday night for high school football. We're back up. Right now, we're in the middle of a timeout. The score is 0-0 zero, zero with 38 seconds to go in the first quarter. I'm Marcus Poe along with the great Willie Gaston. And right now we're having a pretty good football game. Yes, we do. Right now, I think LaFleur started out a little slow, but now, right now it's just a matter of everybody's trying to get a rhythm right now. One thing uh, LaFleur has been able to do, they've been able to move the ball between the 20s. And once they get inside or near the red zone, they kind of stall out and have to punt the ball away. But right now, they are on the move, handoff to the left side. I'm sorry, to the right side. And they pick up the first down. Green on the carry. Jacoby Green scrambles down the right sideline, cuts back to the middle, and he picks up about 15, 16 yards on a carry. Yes, it was a great run. And on the replay, you can see where he makes a cut on the inside. He finds the cut back. And right now, we have a player that's down. We don't want to make any speculation on who it is, but we're just going to wait and see. Yeah, it makes you wonder if the uh, the rain conditions you know, play play in that. Sometimes the, the fields be a little slick, someone can step wrong, or someone can, you can easily just fall on top of them and you get injured. But uh, let's just hope that it's nothing serious. Yeah, because when it's raining like this, a lot of times you get into the ground game. And as a coach, most coaches can't stand for the rain during a football game. The hog <laughs> mileys love it. Because <laughs> they know they're going to be at it all night. Now I, now I get to whoop the guy in front of me and show him who boss. Put him on skates. That's it. I know that you always used to say this is great football weather when it's like, oh, I hated it. I, uh, I, like, I like the nice dry feel, a nice sunshiny crisp day. I like the weather conditions. Like about 70 degrees. Sunny. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Where it's not too hot, not, not too cold. It's, I call it baby bear weather. It's just <laughs> right. Yeah. Baby bear weather. Baby bear weather. <laughs> That was, it looks like it's Jacoby Green who just had a big run. He's limping off the field. Like I said, we hope that it's nothing really serious. Yeah, but one thing is he's putting a little pressure on it, so that's, that's a plus. 
anytime you get an ankle injury because that's what it looks like. Well, the floor can't really ha uh, lose any more their, their starters. Their starting quarterback, Rodney English, is not playing tonight. And also, their starting offensive lineman, Jelani Petway, is down with the injury also. Yes, and they started out the night having Leatherwood at quarterback. First and 10, so. Leatherwood rolls out to the left, fires to, looks like D'Angelo Stewart. Stewart down inside the 10. He's fighting at the five. He stopped, but he picks up a first down. He's five met, seconds to go. He's met by a host of Baldwin County players. Before, and that's what you want to see. That was a good delivery, good catch. And you can see it on the replay. He rolls to his left. Good arm motion. Gets right to his receiver. And D'Angelo got what we call yak. He got some yards after the catch, and that's what you want to see out your receiver. And one good thing about, about Stewart, when you get close to the end zone like this, you can throw what's generally like a alley-oop or a jump ball because he stands at 6'4", and is a pretty easy target for a quarterback to, to find. Yes, he is. At 6'4", if you have a smaller defensive back, that's the matchup you look for. That's the matchup you want to go to into the corner of the end zone. All right, now there's another timeout down on the field. End of as, the quarter. As the quarter comes to an end. With the quarter going to an end, I, right now we'll take a little quick break. With 12 minutes to go in the game, it's LaFleur 0, Baldwin County 0. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back. Like all that goes for naught. Let's see what let's see what the referee says. That would probably have to be a dead ball foul of some sort, because he threw the flag after he got into the end zone. Maybe an unsportsmanlike. Sportsman yeah, that's what it looks like. Unsportsmanlike yeah. against Lafleur. That'll back them up on the point after attempt. And they may decide to go for two instead of. Trying to but kick it just it from depends. The distance. Ball and count. It may take the penalty on the kickoff. Yeah, make them, or like exactly. Because they the take kickoff. it on the kickoff, that means they get better field position on the kickoff. But it's just a matter, and it seems like that's the decision they made. They will keep the ball down on the three-yard line. We have a dead ball on sportsmanlike on the scoring team. The visitors had the choice and have elected to take it on the kickoff. The try will be from the three-yard line. We're going to have the try for point. We're going to have the try for point, which LaFleur is going for two. Now, what they have, the formation is a shotgun trips right. There's Leatherwood, rolls right, looks right, dumps right. The point after is good. It is good. Looks like it's hauled in by the 6'4 Stewart. But Stewart didn't really have to go up high. He just had to kind of reach yeah. a little low for that one. But he didn't have to go up for it. He threw it to him low, which was a good placement of the football. Again, we're going back to look at the touchdown. And as you see right after, the flag comes out, which is now going to be taken on the kickoff. All right, LaFleur walks the ball in on the first play of the second quarter. 11.54 to go. The score is 8-0 LaFleur, and they're getting ready for the kickoff. I tell you what, it seemed a little, uh, something's kind of seemed a little out of place like that. You, you had you had the big drive to, the end of first quarter, and then they switch field, and you had the injury. It kind of seemed like that the wind was taken out of the sail of the Rattlers, but they were able to bounce right back, got good field position, got down inside the five-yard line, and walked into the end zone. 
Yeah, but I think right now LaFleur has found the rhythm and they're waking up now. It, and it, with them waking up, it's starting to wake up their offense. And now they're starting to move the ball. Exactly, because you're right. They haven't had a, a serious problem with the defense. The defense has been playing pretty well. So now let's see what – let's see if Baldwin County can answer. Baldwin County hadn't had an opportunity to really get much going tonight. But Baldwin County is a young team. Rattlers lined up for the kickoff. This time they're kicking off from the 25. As a result of the penalty, ball's taken in, buffed and picked up at the 32-yard line. Dwayne Cohen on the return. Gets tackled right at, I'd say, the 38-yard line. First and 10, Baldwin County. Baldwin County quickly out on the field. Decides not to huddle. The floor is still barking signals from the sideline, trying to get ready, get me in the position. The Baldwin they County going from the pistol. Under center. Here's a handoff to the right up the middle. Here comes a flag. Baldwin County picks up about eight yards on the carry, but that flag in the backfield looks like holding. Number one, Cohen. It comes back. They're going to back it up. Now, right now, it looks like Baldwin County shooting themselves in the foot. In order to answer the floor, they, they need to put together a drive. It's a five-yard penalty. And you can't have a holding penalty on the play. Because now you're putting yourself in a long yardage situation with puts you right in the defense hands where the defense could dictate to you what you can do. So you got first, first and 15. Down and 15. And the Tigers try it again. Hand off again to the outside. He cuts back. And he gets knocked down just past the 40 at the 42 yard line. Goes Cohen. Wayne Cohen. And right here, you see Cohen off the right side. He makes a few moves and gets a positive gain on the play. Now it's second down. Hand off to the running back. Number 20, R.J. Stevens. Stevens. So they're alternating their backs right now, giving Cohen a breather. Third down, five yards to go. The hurry up offense. The Tigers trips formation to the right. Quarterback barks out the signals. Man in motion comes back to the inside. The floor showing blitz. Getting more signals from the sideline. Hands off to the inside to run back straight up the middle. He gets to the line of scrimmage. Maybe one, maybe two yards. And that looks like that's all he's going to be able to get on that carry. A little like R.J. Stevens on the, running the ball once more. And I think right now Baldwin County is trying to establish the run. On third down and six, I would have thought they'd gone for a pass. You would on that think one. they'll put it in the air. They had the formation, they had the trips, had the man in motion. You would think they'll put it in the air, but they decided to keep it on the ground. Maybe the weather played a factor in that decision. But I'm looking for them to have a play set, a pass play set up off of that later. So we're going to keep our eyes open for it. Nice snap, nice high kick. Return of signals for the fair catch, but gets out of the way. And they were down the ball, Baldwin County will, at the 20-yard line. First down and 10 from the 20. Here come the Rattlers once more. Had a nice, successful drive the end of first quarter. See if they can pick things up again from where they left off. Well, right now it looks like Baldwin County needs a stop because I feel like if LaFleur scores on this play, I think Baldwin County is going to be in a world of hurt. Even though it's 14 points, or if the score scores and go for two and get it, it'll be 16 down. Officials say the ball was first touched at the 24 inside handoff. LaFleur picks up about two yards on that carry, brings up about second down and long eight, short nine. Seven. 
Interesting night tonight, though. A little rain. <laughs> but now you got second and eight, second and nine. Fake the handoff. Leatherwood keeps it. Looks like he gains about eight, which makes it third and one. Right now, they're trying to keep the ball in Leatherwood's hands. Keep the ball moving. Keep the, keep the ball on the ground on a night like this. Most coaches traditionally don't like to pass it, but when your running game is working like it is for the floor, why throw it? Third and a short one. Leatherwood receives the snap, takes it, gets behind his blocker, pushes forward, and he may have picked up the first down, just enough yards. They spot the ball at the 30, and indeed it is 35. a first down. They spot it at the 35. It is a first down for the first, first down. Me, 35 yards. First and 10, LaFleur, 8.15 to go in the half. Leatherwood barks out the signals. Gives direction. He drops back the pass, a little dump pass. A little too high that time for Leatherwood. Pass intended for Tommy Harris. What we're doing right now is right now LaFleur is trying to just keep the defense on us. Yeah, I, you're right. You can only run the ball so many, so many times before they start bringing that seven, eight man up in the box. The floor goes duels. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, follow his blocker, Leatherwood, to the right side, cuts back to the inside, picks up the first down out to the 46, 47 yard line. First down the floor, and they are marching. Right now, Leatherwood is a one man tank. <laughs> You know, last year he was their starting quarterback, but uh, Coach Schemberger looked over his routes and found he, out that he had a, another talented arm in writing the English and decided to put Leatherwood in the backfield, but hey, he, he looks comfortable running and throwing the ball. Hadn't seen the well, way he did throw the ball a couple of times. I was about to say we hadn't seen it, but <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he can't do it. That's, this time uh, the running back tries to take it from Leatherwood. Leatherwood pulls it. Rambles down inside across the 50 at about the 49-yard line, close to another LaFleur first down. Leatherwood kept it, made a move, got north and south, gained some positive yards. Boy, right now that yards per carry average is, must be pretty high for LaFleur and for Leatherwood and himself. As the rain continues to fall. Yep, the floor but keeps it on the ground. Baldwin County has to do something to shut down the run game. Again, this time, this hand time off to the left it. side goes to Chester Williams. Williams may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Chester Williams, Jr. on the carry. Number 21, Javon Bolden. Rings up. What's now looks like. Third down for the floor, third down and short. Feel like it's third and one and a half. Well, since they don't do halves in football. <laughs> <laughs> Long one, short two. Leatherwood again behind his blockers, goes to the left side, breaks across to 40, down to the 35, cuts it outside to the 25, 20, 15, steps out of a tackle into the end zone, touchdown. Rattlers. Wow, that was a spectacular run. No flags on the play. 44 yards later, Leatherwood's in the end zone. Follow the replay, breaks one, two, makes a man miss, three tackles, and he just literally runs through the arm tackle. <laughs> man. That, <laughs> that is a strong run. That is a strong run, and Leatherwood is having a great night. Leatherwood knife. is 205 pounds. You got six feet, 205 pounds moving at, at about a four or five speed, man. He can pretty much do what he wants to do. They go for two. LaFleur doesn't get it. Okay. So the score now is LaFleur 14, Baldwin County nothing. 
We're going to break. And we'll be here when you get back. And welcome back to Mobile County Public Schools presentation of high school football. 6.09 left to go in the first half. The floor is up 14-0. Can't say enough about James Leatherwood. Man, Leatherwood is a one-man show so far. Yep, reminds me of another player that wore number one, Sherman Williams from Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a kickoff from the floor. Now Baldwin County trying to get something going. Ball taken at the 18-yard line. Breaks to the right sideline. One man to beat. Looks like the kicker. And he can run past him at the 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Baldwin County. And just like that, the Tigers are back in the game. One thing I can say, tonight these number ones are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> going catches it deep. And he just finds a crease. If you look at the replay, he finds a crease on the outside. Hits it full speed, and that's what you want to see from your return man. He never hesitated, never waited, and he just accelerated and just exploded. Dwayne Cohens takes the ball at the 18, goes 82 yards, sprints into the end zone, end zone for the touchdown. Right now, Ball County is lining up for the point after. Shifts from the left to the right. Kickers ready. Here's the snap. Kicks down. It's up right into the line. And it's blocked. PAT is no good. 5.56 to go in the second quarter. New score. The floor 14. Baldwin County 6. Diesel is a very big industry. And uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jake graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, with all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. All right, we're back. 5.56 to go in the first half. New ball game. LaFleur 14, Baldwin County 6. That's what you got to like about high school football. One play can put you right back in the ball game. Onside kick has to go 10. LaFleur jumps on the balls around, and Baldwin County recovers the onside kick. Wow. What did I tell you? Number 25. Number 21, Javon Bolden recovers. I mean, that's just one of those plays where the ball just, he couldn't get a handle on it. It's wet. It was, a, it was wet. Uh, field conditions in favor for Baldwin County for that. 
LaFleur wasn't expecting the onside. Like you said earlier, Baldwin County needs to make something happen, and they did make something happen right then. Yes, but that comes down to not understanding the rule because the player had waited till the ball actually went 10 yards. <laughs> it was exactly what Baldwin County was doing. They waited to make sure it get the 10 or touch the player, and they were able to capitalize. Here's this fake sweep. Quarterback straight up the gut. Picks up the first down inside across the 50-yard line, across the 40, inside the 30. Jawan Judge, quarterback, does a keeper. And what Baldwin County likes to do, send the guy in motion, get the misdirection going, and he just pulls it out. Good read. Drains the first down. Hurry up offense. Hand off inside. Running back. Pushes forward, picks up about three yards on that carry. Zion Powell, we can see who it is getting up off the ground. Number one, Cohen. Cohen. Again. These number ones tonight are just moving the football. See it. They are really moving the football. Second and seven. Hand off the Cohen again. Cuts back. Looks like he gains about three. Brings looks up. like it'll be third and about four. Looks like, looks like four, three yards for the ball count. Hurry the first up. down. Dive straight up the gut. There's the push. Ball spotted at the 25-yard line. First down, Baldwin County. And the chains will move. First down. That I think they kickoff gave the ball to Cohen again on the play. That kickoff return looks like it did give a little it, spark to their offense. And plus, the onside kick. Yep. Now that, Baldwin County's in business. They're in business. Fakes the handoff. Play's going to stop. Looks like we had a false start down here at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the field. It's like one of the wide receivers took off before the ball was snapped. As a coach, you, you want to ask your receiver, how do you jump offside? That ball. And they're looking right <laughs> down the line, looking at right the at ball. the ball. Offense. You can't go to where the ball snap. But <laughs> Still first down. <laughs> He's a little anxious. Yeah. But like they say, you can't move, can't play to the ball snap. So instead of it being first and 10, ball county has first and 15. Backs him up five yard at the 30. In motion, number 23. Judge hands off again to Cohen. Nathan Barnes. Cohen cuts back to inside, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Baldwin County is going with the no huddle again. Looking over to the sideline. Now, this was something. That coaches started doing a long time ago, looking over to the sideline, waiting to see what the defense lines up in. He gets to play, drops back, look, judge, fires down the middle, and the ball is caught inside the 15, down to about the 10 yard line. Almost breaks a tackle and gets into the end zone. Was well, Jermaine Williams? Williams. Jawan just drops back and he he squeezed it in there. <laughs> yep. And he found his big target, Jermaine Williams. Give credit to Williams for hauling it in across the middle. Tigers go trips right, motions right. Judge takes the snap, runs up the middle, pushes the ball inside the five yard line, brings up second down, 321 to go in the first half. Second and go, and the Tigers are driving. Now you'd like to see what they're doing. They're spreading everybody out. They cleared it out for him to make sure he had a lane to run the ball. Judge inside to Cohen. Cohen this time met by a pit of Rattlers. Did you say a pit? <laughs> <laughs> he said a pit. A pit of Rattlers. <laughs> But you Stay like pit. that defensive call, though. You like the defensive call. Down what? on the goal line, he sold out, just sent the blitzers, and they made the yeah. play. That was a great run blitz call. 
We got third down, Baldwin County. Third and five, Judge puts a man in motion. He drops back, fires on the slant, touchdown, Baldwin County. To Jermaine Williams. Williams, again, with the tough catch across the middle on the slant this time, pulls it in for the touchdown. Baldwin County's only two points away from tying it up. Well, that was just a great call. It looked like they woke up. <laughs> Got a return, onside kick. Again, in motion, looks back to the slant. Fires across the middle. Touchdown, Wide looks like a tight open. end drug across the middle. Fake to the left, threw his back to the right. Touchdown, or point after. Number 81, Chris McCall. McCall couldn't have been any more wide open. I mean, he, he was so wide open, he just stood up in the back of the end zone. The closest defender to him was the A and the Alabama on South Alabama. <laughs> 2.23 to go in the first half. Score is now 14-14, brand new ball game. Welcome back. 2.23 to go in the first half. Baldwin County made something happen like we were suggesting. Tied the ball game up, 14-14. This time a nice high pooch kick. Takes the defender to the far sideline. Catch Makes the catch, but steps out of bounds. Yeah, and that's what a lot of coaches are starting to do now. To keep from kicking the ball to the deep man, they start pooch kicking it right over to the side. A lot of those guys, those uh, speedsters are back there. And we saw it early when Cohen, he took the kickoff 82 yards and changed the whole face of the game in one play. Same thing could have happened there, but nice call by the coach. Nice pooch kick. But if you notice tonight, these two number ones are going at it. It's like they're having a duel. There's a battle for number one. <laughs> Right now we have number one and number one A. This time the number one is Leatherwood for the floor. Trips left, gives the ball off. Running back caught in the backfield, reverses field, pulls the ball down, goes to the left, and picks up, looks like about three to four yards. That was Chester Williams on that carry. Yes, Chester had nowhere to go. Goes to his right, breaks the tackle, goes back left, finds a few blockers and turns nothing into some positive yards. Good run by Chester and good for the offensive line for not giving up on them, keep maintaining their blocks. So now you got second and six. Ball on the LaFleur's 31 yard line. Sprint out to the right. Looks like run all the way. Leatherwood. May have gained a yard. Gets across the line of scrimmage. Picks up about a yard. So now you're looking at third down. Third down of a minute 25 to go. What do you do in this situation? Uh, you know the momentum has switched over to Baldwin County. Do you put the ball, keep it on the ground, put it in the air? Got to get a first down. It's a must to get a first down no matter what. But as you see, Baldwin County, the box is loaded. Again, Baldwin County, it looks like they're expecting to run. The floor drops back. It's Leatherwood, he sprints out to the right. Fires it down the sideline and just out of the reach of a wide receiver. Guy, he was had a bean on the ball, and that looked like that was Darius, Darius Polk. Polk. And Polk had had this man beat, had a step on him. Leatherwood fires it downfield under a little pressure, just missed Polk. If he just had to put a little more air on it, give him an opportunity to run under. But nevertheless, it's fourth and five. They have to punt. 55 seconds to go in the first I half. I don't know if I want to punt to this young man right here, Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> He's already back. returned the kicker. Stewart takes the punt. 
puts it up in the air. And it was blocked. blocked. It was blocked, blocked by oh, number man. 81. Oh, my. Chris McCall gets in there and blocks. Just exactly what LaFleur did not want to happen. They each person. Turn the ball you, over on down. And to see it, it was one of those blocks to where we didn't even know it was blocked. <laughs> because all he did was stick his hand out there. And next ball hit his know, hand and blocked The it. ball's laying on the ground. Great play by Chris McCall. First so now and we, 10 at the 20-yard line, Baldwin County, we have time. They can put it in the end zone, take the lead. Judge drops back, fires it to the sideline. Again, it's Wiggins with the catch. He steps out of bounds, stops the clock. Only picks up about two yards, but most important thing, they stop the clock from running. Yep, 43 seconds left. They really want to put some points on the board to change the momentum. They got the momentum, they want to keep it, so... Right now, you got second and eight. Judge, here's the handoff. Fake the handoff. Dumps it out in the, in the flats. Throws and it to Chris McCall again. McCall is tackled, stopped at about the 13-yard line. Timeout, ball and count. They want to talk it over. Another good call by the coaching staff. Yeah, with 32 seconds, they're trying to be sure that they at least get a first down on this third down play. I like that call. They've been effective running the ball to the left or to the right, wherever, with Cohen. Faked them to the left side, pulled the ball down, and came back wide open again. Same thing on the two-point conversion. Yeah. They got wide open. Faked to the left, came back to the right. Yeah, but you notice in they're having their players step up. They're stepping up. They're making plays now. And right now, all the thing LaFleur wants to do is stop the bleed. They really want to stop the bleed. You let them return the kick. They got an onside kick. And basically right now, LaFleur's offense is doing the job. Their defense stopping them, but their special teams is really killing them right now. Special teams for Baldwin County being really special. Yeah. That's why they call them special teams. <laughs> Third down at about four at the 14. Again, man in motion. Judge fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, back across the middle, ball's tipped. Easy catch in the From end zone. McCall. <laughs> McCall is having a game all of a sudden. Of, McCall wake, wakes up. He I don't know what they told catch. him on the sideline, but he has awakened. Fakes to hand off to the, to the left, boots to the right. Nice tip. Easy, breezy from a call. I think now Baldwin County is going for two. They spread in the field. I look for a quarterback draw right Empty here. Backfield. He's either running it or fake he, it inside. Touchdown. They get the two Got points. The two points. They're up by eight. With a whole brand new ball game. 23 seconds to go in the first half. Ball count is up 22 to 14 over the Rattlers. We'll be right back. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. Welcome back. Mobile County Public High School Thursday Night Football. 22 to 14, Baldwin County with the lead and the kickoff. Ball is muffed, picked up, and pushed out across the 35 to the 36 yard line, 37 yard line. The floor with 14 seconds on the clock. Like you said earlier, they probably just want to stop the bleeding. I really yeah. don't see LaFleur trying to make something happen here. They put the ball on the ground and maybe just take a knee right now. Really, I'll just take a knee right now. Take a knee, let the clock run out, go in halftime and regroup. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> that's just something I would do. 
But it looked like LaFleur was going to try to make a play before half. They're spreading the field, got trips to the left. Looks like they're going to do something. Looks like it. Edward Rose Rolling left. left. He winds up, loads up, looks, sprints out to the right, and he walks the sidelines out of bounds at the 49-yard line with four seconds to go. And Coach Schemberger said, uh-uh, nothing doing. We're going to try to make something happen here. Like I said, Rose left. They had a trips formation left. Leatherwood rolls left, looking downfield. No one's open, so he just keeps it and takes off. Baldwin County lines up in a deep, deep prevent. And LaFleur takes a timeout. They want to discuss this one more time. As a defensive guy, I hate it, prevent. <laughs> four, seconds <to> go, <laughs> four seconds to go in the first half. We'll be right back. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts. Check your child's grades and homework. Plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations, and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. And we're back, LaFleur. Looks like they're coming up with something. They may want to try to throw the ball to the end zone. Maybe they have some type of trick play or something, especially for this situation. Yep, but they wanted to see right before we came back, LaFleur called timeout. So, <laughs> that means that for four seconds, if we, Coach may have something up his sleeve. We may see some exciting football with these next four seconds. I'll tell you what, the last five minutes have been pretty exciting. Like both teams just woke up all of a sudden. I guess when the rain stopped, they started. Well, that's what you want to see from two good teams. You want to see them compete. You, I like to see young men compete on this level mm -hmm. because it shows, them, shows what they're made of. Exactly. And right now, they both are competing hard. Right now, Baldwin County has five men back. Look like they're only going to rush. Well, they're rushing four. They put everybody back deep. They got three on the goal line, two at the 30-yard line, and LaFleur has trips to the right. Leatherwood drops, looks, Steps no up. pressure, unloads, fires it, and it's caught it's by... Stewart, Stewart at the at the 15 almost breaks the tackle, but he's brought down at about the 15, 14 yard line, and that'll do it for the first half. And what an exciting first half that turned out to be! Just say what an exciting second quarter. Because <laughs> if you remember the first quarter, there was no scoring going on. Then all of a sudden, this eruption. You had both defenses. Fighting hard in the first quarter, second quarter, they woke up and they gave us this score that we have now at halftime, Baldwin County, 22, LaFleur, 14. We will be right back.
So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything? Any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So, how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts, check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. We're back. Welcome back to the Mobile County Public School Thursday night football game between Baldwin County and LaFleur High School, where Baldwin County is leading 22 to 14. And right now, we're just enjoying our halftime show. And right now, we have our executive here from Executive, executive director. director. There, there you, go. you go. I can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a pleasure meeting you. It's great to have you well, here great. this evening. It's great to be here. It's a great opportunity. Um, sure, we've got, we've got a lot of great things yeah. out there for the kids to do in school, prepare for careers. Well, yeah. What exactly are the careers that we're, that you're presenting? Right. We like to think that we have something for every student. We've got every career available, a career opportunity for training for students, all the way from nursing to architecture, drafting, pre-engineering, welding, ship fitting. We've got anything a student can imagine. We've got it right here at Mobile County Public Schools. All they need to do is make the right choices and get on a career path. Okay, so basically you're starting them early and making a career decision just in case they choose not to go to college or whatever, right? Absolutely. We've got something. If a student wants to go to college, wants to go to a four-year college program, we're going to make sure that they're well prepared so when they get into college, they're going to be successful, that they're going to be college and career ready. If they want to go ahead and put off college, four-year college, and go to a two-year college, maybe they have an interest in becoming an RN or a doctor, well, we can start them out in high school with a CNA, a Certified Nursing Assistant Program, and then they go on to a two-year college like Bishop State. We've got a great dual enrollment program with them. They can finish through Bishop State and continue on to a four-year college in a, in a certification to become an LPN or whatever they want to do. You know, we have TV production at LaFleur High School where students can start out working with outstanding instructors, learn all the basics so when they go into post-secondary, they've got head and shoulders again above the rest of the crowd. Well, so we just basically putting the kids ahead of it putting these kids ahead of schedule. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a much more competitive world than it was when you and I were kids. So we need to make sure that kids have, you know, have a great idea and start that ball rolling right off the front. And that's a great program. I mean, that's something that all the kids can enjoy. It keeps them interested in school. And basically it helps them figure out what it is that they want to do in their life. Absolutely. We've got a great program. Sure, coming up this weekend or this next week on Wednesday and Thursday, 10,000 eighth grade students are going to learn about careers in our region. And when they go to these career, this career fair, which is called the Worlds of Opportunity, when they get back to their school, they can engage with their counselors and find out what kind of career opportunities are available at their high schools. The important thing is that parents and students need to talk to their counselors at the schools because the counselors are the ones who can help them make those decisions, make those career choices that will last a lifetime. Well, we appreciate you standing here with us and telling us about it. Hopefully, we'll talk to you some more later. Well, I look forward <laughs> to the opportunity because, again, all these champions out here, they're going to start in high school and their careers will roll on to success. But thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it, Willie. No, we appreciate you being here. Thank, thank you, you again. All right. And now we're going to go down on the field and look at Baldwin County for a second for the halftime show.
right. We just got through talking about what is offered as far as the technical schools. Now, what we're going to do now is look at one of the schools, BC Rain, who has an aviation project going on. So we're going to take a look at that. Welcome to BC Rain High School, where we believe in preparing students to be college and career ready. Our mission is to provide all students with a rigorous and relevant hands-on educational experience that will foster lifelong learners. We are proud of our academic rigor and real-world connections in which our students are engaged at all levels, including our signature academy of aviation and aerospace. Within our school, we believe it is important for our students to be well-rounded and excel, not only academically, but socially. Our students practice the essential skills necessary for success within a college atmosphere or a workforce environment. Education is more than information found in textbooks. Education is exploration, experiences, and invaluable opportunities to grow. BC Rain nourishes students within a small learning community which is a supportive and student-centered learning environment. We offer students the chance to realize their untapped potential. You possess more than you think. I hope you see the opportunities BC Rain has to offer. I look forward to seeing you during your campus visit. Remember, education is the key to your future. For more information on the opportunities BC Rain can offer you, call 251-221 it's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts, check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. Diesel is a very big industry and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, went all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. It starts with education, the fact that we make a difference in the lives of our students every single day. Our teachers work to unleash the potential inside our students, to seize and help guide them to their dreams, to show them with hard work and dedication they can be what they want to be. It starts with business, providing an innovative product or service to people, providing good jobs for hard workers, and learning to go the extra mile and invest back into the community. When businesses work together, it's a good thing. When businesses work together with the school system, it's a great thing for everyone involved. It starts with a community, the fact that we are all in this together, the fact that we want to leave the world a better place for the next generation. 
It's a powerful thing when people come together for the common good, for a goal that enriches everyone. It starts when we tie it all together, where businesses mentor students and broaden their worldview, when community provides after-school activities, where volunteers give up their time to help students with sports, science, and weekend projects, where industry engages and trains, where we all embrace technology and help tell the amazing stories all around us. Together, we can raise the quality of life for all Mobilians. Mobile County Public Schools. It starts with us. Welcome back to Mobile County Public Schools system. Thursday night football game between Baldwin County and LaFleur High School where Baldwin County is leading 22 to 14. And right now we have the LaFleur High School band on the field. And we're just gonna have a great time watching the band. Welcome back to Mobile County Public School System Thursday Night Football again. We're about to go to a break. We're Baldwin County's leading 22 to, nothing, 22 to 14 over the floor. And we'll be back right after this break. 
Diesel is a very big industry, and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, with all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. Welcome back to Mobile County Public School System Thursday Night Football, where Baldwin County is leading the floor high school 22 to 14. We had, we had an exciting second half. Uh, exciting uh, second quarter, yeah. yeah. Uh, for a moment there, I, uh, looking at that score, oh, they put up uh, they put up <laughs> these, these points. We were thinking like that was nothing, points in that nothing was going to happen. The yeah, you're right. 36 points at one point. We're thinking uh, nothing was going to happen. Uh, the, the rain was going to slow everything down. They're going to have some turnovers. But uh, LaFleur jumped out early to a 14 nothing lead. Uh, Baldwin County struggled a lot. Then all of a sudden, like you said early on, they had to do something. Yeah, and it just erupted. I mean, it started out with Cohen returning the kick. He returned it like 70-something, maybe 80 yards. Then turned around, Baldwin County kicked an onside, surprise onside kick, and ended up surprise. getting it back. <laughs> then they took it down and scored. And then, I the mean, defense it's, stood up on a three yeah. and out, block punt, block punt, put him in position again, deep Chris in the McCall. core territory. And, and then the go ahead touchdown was to Chris McCall, McCall, who blocked the punt. Who blocked the punt? McCall just had an, ex an exciting. An exceptional second quarter. I mean, that's that's unreal. As a player, you love to have those type games. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. They were <laughs> right now, uh, Lafleur is having a presentation of some sort. Yeah. And Baldwin County already has a already had the momentum, but the bad thing about that is uh, halftime came up on them and they had to stop. So you think uh, when you go into halftime, what is the coaches telling a team like Baldwin County from their perspective? They've got gained that momentum, got the lead. What is he telling them? Game's not over. <laughs> Game's not over. You still got another half to play. You still got 24 minutes to play. Keep that momentum going. Now on the other side of the coin for the floor, you telling them forget about the first half. They up. You got to start this like it's nothing, nothing. And you got to come out. We got to move the ball. We got to make some plays on defense. We got to make some plays on offense. And that's what you, that's that's what Lafleur has to do in the second half. Stop the bleed. Because their main their main go to guy has been Leatherwood. And you got to get somebody else involved besides him because the second half, I guarantee you, Baldwin County is going to be keying on. Him. They, will, they are known for making good halftime adjustments. Both squads are. And the number one thing that's going on here is number one for each squad. James Leatherwood, quarterback slash running back for LaFleur, and Dwayne Cohen, junior running back for Baldwin County. Yep. And then McCall said, I'm not going to let Cohen have all the fun, so I got to get up in here somewhere. And wasn't that something? Man, he just exploded <laughs> right there towards the end. He had the block punt, a touchdown reception, a big catch on a, on a third and short to keep the drive moving. Yeah, I mean, they started implementing him in offense. Wow. Okay, Look now that. we're going to break. Again, this is Mobile County Public school system Thursday night football while Baldwin County is leading LaFleur 22 to 14. We'll be back after these messages. So Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? 
Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. The quality of education that I received from the Mobile County Public School System really prepared me for global success. Being uh, an international opera singer, I get to travel all across the world. And one of the most important aspects about that is being able to communicate and work with people. And the Mobile County Public School System really equipped me to be greatly successful worldwide. Less than a minute to go before kickoff. The floor is down in their end zone, huddling together one last time right before the second half starts. Getting that little last bit of information from their coaching staff. Also happening on the other end of the field is Baldwin County doing the same thing. They're huddled up down there. The floor a little animated down on this end. And the score is still 22 to 14. Baldwin County put on a little show right before the first half ended. Yes, they did. And right now you're looking at LaFleur trying to hype themselves up. And Baldwin County kind of calm, like, yeah, we've been here before. <laughs> they, try, they, try, they try to over to the sideline, like, uh, like, just like you said. Uh, like, yeah, we've been here before. Like, we're the, we're the big dogs. We're the big boys in town. We, we can handle this. This is our game. But LaFleur is still in this ball game. They're still in it. Got 24 minutes to make something happen. And it's funny how how it changed over early in the first quarter or the first half. We were saying how Baldwin County had to make something happen. Yeah. And they, they did. They, special teams woke up, 82-yard kickoff return by Cohen, block punt, uh, successful on the PAT, a uh, two-point conversion. And they made something happen. But it's just like you said earlier. Special teams became very special. They became very special. <laughs> so, you know, that's why they say in football you got to work on all three phases of the game. And a lot of times when your offense and your defense isn't clicking, your special teams a lot of times will give your team that spark. All it takes is that one play to turn it around, and that's what's happened. Looks like LaFleur is getting ready to kick off. To start the second half, they're on the field. Look like they're ready. Here comes the Tigers of Baldwin County. They're ready also. Now, what you want now is very important that LaFleur, on his opening drive, gets three and out. They have to make him get three and out. Because, remember, Baldwin County had the momentum. If Baldwin County scores, they're going to ride that momentum. So it's going to be important defensively for LaFleur to stop Baldwin County. Back deep, again, is Dwayne Cohen. Do the LaFleur, do they kick it to Cohen or try to kick it away from him? What do you I think? wouldn't kick it to him. I, I would literally just kick it high, make him have to run up to it. I would not kick it straight to him. i kick it off to the side. If the ball goes out of bounds, we'll take the penalty. But Better. you don't want to take that chance of him getting the ball in his hands and making somebody miss and he's gone. Better to give up the penalty yardage than the six points. There you go. At least it gives me an opportunity to put the defense on the field. All right, Stewart looks over. Here comes LaFleur's kickoff unit. Angelo Stewart, he's back at around the 31, 30 yard line, getting ready to tee it up, kick it off, and get this second half underway. And here comes the kick. It's high and short to an up back, and he wisely grabs it and goes to the ground. That was a smart play by LaFleur. Smart play. Just like you said, they elected to keep the ball away from Cohen, not wanting to give up another big play. So now, Baldwin County starts off on their own 33. Looks like that they're on 33-yard line. Again, not huddling. Come straight from the sideline, line up over the ball. And looks like not quite an empty backfield. And the ball snapped. It goes under the quarterback's legs, and it looks like it was Cohen. It's Cohen that landed It was a form of a wildcat. <laughs> I know it looked kind of it looked kind of funny, <laughs> funny there. Yeah, you're right. 
But that was a former wildcat. They were trying to put the ball in Cohen's hands. Well, he's the wildest cat out there for the ball. Uh, and they're the doing Tigers. it once more. Cohen at quarterback. Cohen, he barks the signal. Judge in the slot. He Motion. It, fakes it. He, he takes it. it right up the middle, and he gets those lost yards back. Looks like he picks up about four, oh, four and a carry. half on that carry. Made by number three, Third down and about 19 from their own 23-yard line. Almost 22, 23, somewhere in between there. Yep. Judge, Judge this time fakes it, rolls right, dumps it to the tight end, and the ball falls right out of his hands. It was Chris McCall. It was McCall again. As you see, they're trying to get the ball to McCall. If you watch the replay, Judge fakes on play action, rolls back to his right, hits McCall. McCall just misses the ball. And those are things in those situations McCall has to learn that you have to, when the ball touches your hands as a receiver, you got to catch it. Well, the floor is able to do exactly what you suggested, get a quick three and out, stop the bleeding. Here comes the punt. It's a low line drive. Ball's corralled in around at about the 30 yard line. And he's running back and he's fumbles, fumbles the, the ball. ball. Baldwin County hops on the ball, still bouncing around. LaFleur jumps on the ball and jumps on it. LaFleur gets it back at the 10. And it looks like LaFleur did recover. Wow. <laughs> Watch the replay. Almost gets blocked. <laughs> ball one hops. He gets a little muff there. Yep, and he stays on his feet. It was number 14, that Tommy was, Harris. That was Harris again. And then he turns around and loses the football. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Talking about dodging the bullet. <laughs> yeah, they LaFleur dodged a major bullet right there. Well, they corralled it in, gained possession of the ball at the 10-yard line, first and 10 from LaFleur's own 10. As the rain stops. And the onlookers look on. Leatherwood fakes the handoff, rolls out to the left. He's being chased, breaks away from one tackle, and it takes about three or four Tigers to bring him to the ground. He gets close to first down yard. Picks up nine. Second down and one. And on the replay, you see, we're well, going back a, to the punt. Yeah, the punt. <laughs> Like we said, Tommy Harrison stays on his feet, breaks a tackle, one man to beat, then he just loses the football. <laughs> then is a mad scramble. Second Back down and action. one. Second handoff. And looks like Williams is tackled in the backfield. He may have lost a yard on that play. Yes, he did right now. LaFleur needs to get this first down. LaFleur because gets, now, now, now you're looking at field position. LaFleur now, gets a kind spot. He's right at near the line, line of scrimmage. So it's third and a short one. Leatherwood still from the shotgun. Looks like we have a new running back in the backfield. Leatherwood sneaks it, pushes the pile, brings man. the ball out across the 20. He has the first down. Pass the first down, first and, they keep, and they keep the ball. But I don't think he's used to being under center because the ball was on the ground, and he scooped it up. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's a basic fundamental that a lot of coaches have gotten away from, going to the spread offense and shotgun, and is the fundamental of putting your quarterback up under center handling the football. A lot of guys aren't quite used to sticking their hand up under exactly. center these days. Like they take it five yards deep. High snap. They bobble it over. The fight's over the football. And Leatherwood maintains possession but loses about four yards on that play. Yeah, but at this point, if you watch the replay, Leatherwood catches the ball. They fumbling with it. And both of them fighting for it. It's that Norman Washington in there. I'm sorry. Norman Washington in on the tackle. He gets credit for the tackle. 
Second and 18 ball on the floor's own 16 yard line. Trips again to the right. Leatherwood with Williams in the backfield. Leatherwood rolls right, looks right, tucks it, pulls it, and takes the ball out to the 20 yard line. Picking right. up about four yards on that play. Right now, if LaFleur wants to win this football or get back into it, they are going to have to get another player involved in this offense. Le Leatherwood, Leatherwood cannot continue to tote this team. You're right. It has been a heavy dose of Leatherwood. I mean an extremely heavy dose. And the young man, if you look at him, he's probably in shape, but if you look at his mannerisms, he's a little winded right now. Trips left, rolls left. Pulls the ball, throws back to the right, and is intercepted. Ball picked off at the 30-yard line, races down the left sideline, cuts back, touchdown, Baldwin County. And Leatherwood felt the pressure, threw the ball back across his body and right into the waiting arms. It looks like that was Mr. Lawson on that interception. Yeah, Monje Lawson. And I think that was basically a fatigue throw. He had very little on it, and he ended up throwing it into coverage. And you saw him right there at the end of the play. He ran over to make the tackle, yeah. but just didn't have the energy to kind of get himself back in position. Yep, so now Baldwin County is going for two. It's like pistol formation. J.J. rolls to the right, throws it up, incomplete. 7.24 to go in the third quarter. Baldwin County takes the lead. 28 to 14 off an errant throw from the floor. And we'll be right back after this. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts. Check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations, and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. Wow, the second half has started off like the first half in. It's still lots of excitement, and most of it coming from Baldwin County. Baldwin County up 28-14 off an interception return by number 30 for, La for Baldwin County, Munye Lawson. Yep. And I mean, that just looked like a fatigue throw by Leatherwood. Yep. I mean, he's been the go-to guy all night, and at some point, they got to work somebody else into it. Again, pooch kick high. This time it's deep enough for the deepest man on the field. He takes the ball at the 20, breaks to the left side, has some blockers. And he's brought down near midfield. This time on that return, it was Tommy, Tommy Harris. Harris. As you watch the replay, he gets it on the far side of the field. And he just decides, I'm going to go find me some blockers. And he's short and quick. Good and as quick you feet. see, he makes a cut back. Great return getting back to midfield. Ball at midfield at the 49-yard line of LaFleur, first and 10. Let's see if Schamberger can get someone else to carry the ball because Leatherwood has been the bell cow. Here's the snap. Leatherwood hands off this time to Williams. Williams stretches out to the right sideline. A couple of stiff arms, able to pick up about two, maybe three yards on that carry. Which leaves second down and eight into Baldwin County territory. Yes, they cross the 50. Leatherwood gets direction from Coach Schemberger, runs back to the huddle. And I know Leatherwood would like to carry the ball again himself, but I'm sure Schem uh, Coach Schemberger is telling him, hey, we've got other guys on the team that can help you. You don't have to win this game by yourself. No, they got to win it as a team. That's why it's 11 other, that's why it's 10 other guys plus you on the field. <laughs> Shotgun, inside handoff to Williams. Leatherwood pulls it, keeps it, takes it to the right side, and he's down across the 35, Leatherwood near the 34 yard line. First down for LaFleur. First and 10, LaFleur Rattlers. 
Leatherwood puts me in the mind of another LaFleur great that carried the team like this before. Talking Danny like Woodson. Danny Woodson. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man, Danny Woodson. <laughs> oh, boy. Danny, Danny was a beast. <laughs> I remember one, one game way back when when Danny threw an interception. He was kind of down on himself. And from one side of the field to the other side, ran the guy down, caused a turnover, and LaFleur took possession again. But that was – Danny was a great player. Oh, yeah. And we've had plenty of great players come through the Mobile. Hand off to the right side was Williams. Okay. And you have to look at the Mobile County school system as a whole. We've had great football players come through here. We had a ton of greats. A lot of them uh, – played at the D1 level, uh, such as yourself. Uh, some of them, a lot of them wait on to the NFL. And this time Leatherwood drops back, fires deep, looking for Stewart. Man's all over him, and there's no flag. No flag on the play. The official says that's just good, hard defense. Good wow. play by defensive back. That was, wow. That was Kareem Henry on that play. That's, 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 that's one of those where you go, wow. We have a timeout down on the field with 521 to go in the third quarter. The floor wants to talk it over with the score 28 to 14. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mobile County Public High School football. Leatherwood pulls it, takes it out to the left side, and he's down at the 15-yard line. He kind of caught us off guard. He just came right out the right from the sideline, right in the huddle, jumped up, snapped the ball, pulled the ball down, faked it, faked the handoff, and ran to the left. If you watch him replay, makes one man miss spin move, cuts back, sees a gap and just totes people down to the 15 yard line. <laughs> First and 10, LaFleur to 15, making things happen. He is a great player. He is a great player. And right now he's trying to tote this team to a win. Four men at backfield, old box formation, handoff to the left, pulls it, keeps it himself, brings the ball down to the 11 yard line. Well, Willie, you want to know what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools? What if you're on social network? Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for school news and weather alerts. You can also follow our superintendent, Martha Peak, on Twitter at Super Peak. Super Peak. Second down and six at the 11. Handoff this time to Williams on the left sideline. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown the floor. Well, how about that? Someone How about else? that? <laughs> yeah. That was a great call. Great read by Leatherwood. To hand it off to Williams. On the replay. Hands it off. 
Williams sees Crease and just gets to the end zone. Whoa. You know, makes you wonder if the, the defense was keying totally on Leatherwood that time. They, did he sell him out, sell him on the fake? Stick the ball in the gut to Williams. Williams take it off left tackle, steps into the end zone. And now LaFleur is going for two. Here's the snap, fake. Pushes toward the goal line. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown wow. or PAT is good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a late one right there. That was very late. That was very late. New ball game. Score 28 to 22. LaFleur is battling back. We'll be right back. Wow, an exciting second half. Four minutes and eight seconds to go in the third quarter. LaFleur battled back, down 28-14, now makes it 28-22. And they're getting ready to kick off. This time, probably again, is going to try to avoid Cohen. Maybe a pooch kick, kick it, uh, squib it, or whatever you have to do. But keep the ball out of the hands of the speedster. Floor special teams kickoff unit breaks huddle. Angelo Stewart gets his yardage, sizes up, and here comes the kick from the 40. Boots it deep. Cohen has to back up, take the ball at the three, sprints out to the left, and he was going untouched. Fake makes a move to midfield, and Stewart was able to grab him, preventing the long return. This time, LaFleur elected to kick the ball deep, almost over out kicks uh, Cohen, but he pulls it in at the three yard line, and here's the result. You don't want Cohen to get that ball. <laughs> And I think it was a great kick. But Cohen, once he gets that ball in his hand, he is a dangerous guy. And if you notice tonight, these two number ones are battling it out. Great job by the kicker. Angelo Stewart also doubles his wide receiver to make that stop. But these two number ones are battling it out tonight. Judge didn't like what he saw in the LaFleur defense. Calls a timeout. Both teams go back to their respective corners. 3.56 to go in the third. Ball one's up by six. We'll be right back. It's here, the MCPSS mobile app. It's a way for you to stay connected and informed with all of the happenings around the school district. Receive weather alerts. Check your child's grades and homework, plus more. Watch sports, original programming, find school locations, and read the latest news. Stay connected with all your favorite social networking sites. Download it today for free. And welcome back. Baltimore County's on the field, at midfield. Judge turns off, hand the balls off on the screen. Sweep to the right side. Picks up about three yards on that carry. Couldn't see who it was on that carry that time. We both missed it because I couldn't see the number either. <laughs> Their jersey, the numbers are kind of an off white on a white background, which makes it hard <laughs> for kind of make it out. But nevertheless, Judge, again, second down, hands the ball off to the right again. This time we know that's Cohen. See him dancing around, but it doesn't get far as D. Hobes brings him down. Great tackle by the linebacker, DeAndre Hobes. An official timeout. I guess when your helmet comes off now, you got to go out for a play. Cohen's out. Number 20, R.J. Stevens is in. 
at running back for Cohen's. Third down and looks like about, still about 10 yards. Let's judge it from the lollipops on the sideline. Man in motion. And play is stopped on the field. Got a flag. The officials, they meet, they confer. And we see the referee, he comes over to tell us what happened. We have a dead ball. Ball start on the offense. The down remains three. Dead ball against Baldwin County. So they'll back them up five yards and they'll try it again. Goes from third and 10 to about third and 15. Again, judge from the shotgun formation. Another flag comes out. Again, dead ball, dead ball foul. Illegal, illegal substitution. substitution against Baldwin County. Just dead ball, illegal, illegal substitution on the offense. Ago, Player that had lost his helmet is required to sit out the one play, but he returns after the penalty. He has to sit out one play. It remains third down. Goes from third and the Probable 10 to third and an impossible 20. Bro, he was thinking nine times out of 10, the coaches misunderstood the rule. Even if it's a penalty, I'm thinking they thinking if it was a penalty that it was okay for him to come back in. So they sent them back in. But unless a play is run, I guess according to the rule, unless a play is run, he can't come back on the field. Mm. Okay, now let's explain to us exactly what happened. Brings up third and 20. In motion again. Judge drops back here. It's because of backside pressure. Woo! And, oh, a big hit. This time again, it looks like it was DeAndre Oaks again on the tackle. And R.J. Stevens paid for it. They had right. the blitz on all the way. And they were trying to set up a screen, and wow. Hoag sniffed it out perfectly. Saw the man, saw the offensive lineman come out in the flats. Saw the receiver in the flats, and he just met him right there. Yeah, gotta love it. It's football season. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it. Fourth down and long, high snap. Here's the punt. Partially blocked, and the ball is down at 39, 40 yard line. The floor's ball on 35. And now, the floor is right back in this game. All they have to do now is put another drive together, put some more points on the board. With a minute 53, minute 56 to go in the third quarter, got plenty of time. See that momentum is starting to change again. Uh, like you said, the floor need to make something happen. It came down, ran the ball, uh, Leatherwood, Made lots of the carries, brought the ball down, scored. Made a big stand on defense. A little confusion there on the sidelines coming from Baldwin County. Caused them a couple of penalties. Put them in a tough situation to pick up a first down at third and 20. Uh, punt the ball and LaFleur is in business now. Yep, and LaFleur calls timeout to discuss what's going on, what they're going to do. Still they still have a whole fourth quarter to play, but for somehow, I think that this is a real important drive that's coming up. Yeah, you look at your 6A Region 1 standings. Sarah Land is undefeated, which is a surprise. Then you have Spanish Ford, who's undefeated. Daphne's 2-1. and one. Their one loss is to Sarah Land. Baldwin County, 1-1 one and one in the region. Blunt, 1-1. One one. Gulf Shores, 1-2. and two. LaFleur is 1-2. and two. Robbinsdale one and two, and Centronelle zero oh and three. Wow, so that's your six A region one standings. First and ten from the thirty-five. Leatherwood fakes the handoff again, pulls it, goes left, and he's picked up about six yards on that carry. Man, I tell you, I really want to see his stats at the end of the game because Leatherwood is, well, he every time he grabs the ball, he's picking up five, four, five, six yards. Yep, and he's limping right now. 
Oh boy, you you were kind of afraid of that. You know that uh, he was he was the one that they were. His number was called a lot, a lot, <laughs> and you were afraid something like this may happen. Yes, and when you rely on a player so heavily like this, it's bound to happen at some point. You never like to see it, but it just he just got his ankle rolled up under. Him. Starting the quarterback Rodney English is out. Leatherwood is lifting off the field and which way did like they go? Down on the field, it looks like Sean Felon is warming up. It's like he's getting ready to come in at quarterback. Felon, he's a 5'9", 175 pound sophomore. And he takes the field. Second down and four One yards to go. Seconds. And the ref is asking to reset the clock. He wants it back from 115 to 120. So what's happening with Felon right now? What's going on inside his stomach? Right what's now, going in his head? if he hadn't had many snaps, boy, he nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably will take him to get popped one good time before we get into the game. Well, let's see what's happening. Feline hands the ball off wisely to Williams. And Williams pushes the ball out to the four to five yard line, closer to the first down. One thing I've never understood in football when you look at, at some high schools, and it's, it's all of mostly. Mm -hmm. They never send a play in with a player. <laughs> they always had a quarterback run over to the sideline and he got to run back. You know? <laughs> which, which makes it a lot more running and wears him out a little more. LaFleur, exactly. they were able to pick up that first down on Williams' carry. Phelan, oh, hands off to Williams and the ball's on the turf. Fight for it. Baldwin County says they have it. The floor is looking a little dejected, and the official, he agrees with Baldwin County. Baldwin County has it. Oh, man, do you think that was just uh, just? That was one of those plays where you have a backup in and play. Not, not used to taking snaps with the yeah. first team. And then hand it off and put the ball in the wrong place when he was handing it off. Instead of putting it in the bread basket, it ended up being up. Got so quick little, quick, turnover. Quick little shot of them uh, working on Leatherwood's ankle. He's up walking around on the sideline. Hand off to Cohen and a great another. open field tackle. That was the number Andre two. Ray out there on the tackle. D Ray as his teammates call him. D Ray. That's a, that's a serious name for a defense player. D Ray. Oh, yeah, he's a serious hitter. But he traveled on that, and that's what you want to see. Second down and 12. Fake the handoff to the inside, and penetration again by the Rattlers. This time on the tackle was, looks like it was Patrick Rember. Excuse me, it was 29, Cortland Williams. And that's the end of the third quarter, our score. And that'll bring us to the Baldwin end of the County third Tigers quarter. Right now, Baldwin County, with the ball, momentum shifting, has a six-point lead over the LaFleur Rattlers, 28-22. We'll be right back.
It's third down and 13 for Baldwin County. Judge takes a snap, fakes the pass, pulls it, runs it. He gets down across the 40 at about the 38 yard line, leaves him about four yards shy of the first down. He's gonna bring up about fourth and four on that play. This is four down territory for Baldwin County. And right now you look down on the sideline, you see Leatherwood getting attention to that, to that right foot. And hopefully LaFleur can get him back out there on the field. Fourth down, there's a mad shift. Everybody moves except the center. Ten men run off and ten men run on. Ah, they finna try to put the ball deep. They show punt, show offense, showed an offensive play and decided they're gonna punt it. Ball hits at the 10 and it's downed <laughs> at the one yard line. A great play by the Baldwin County special teams. A good hustle by the first man down to tip the ball back, keep it from going to the end zone. And the second man came in to clean it up. Yeah, great coverage kick. But normally when if you touch the ball and you go into the end zone, the ball is dead right there. It normally becomes a touchback. But I guess they said his momentum took him in the end zone and they marked it at the spot. I don't know what they said, but LaFleur is in a world of trouble right now, backed up on their own one-yard line. And it looks like Leatherwood tried to back out on the field, so it's good to see that he's able to put some weight you, on that ankle. If you are a LaFleur fan, you are ecstatic right now. Right now, Leatherwood's under center, turns, rolls, pulls the ball out, and he's still and on his feet, crossing 15 at the 20, at the 25, still fighting. Pushed out of bounds, Ooh. and oh, wow, over a chair. He hops right back up, but it looks like he's looks like he's fine. They'll spot the ball at the 30-yard line. And if you watch the replay, he finds a crease. For a second there, I thought he was about to take it to the house. <laughs> it did look like that. <laughs> but I think, number uh, 28, Rock. Robert Brown cornered him, took him out of bounds. And then so the flag was thrown County, on that's it. A 15 he tacked on another 15 yards of that for a personal foul. First down. Dead ball foul. Moves the ball out to the 45 yard line. I wonder something. Whenever there's a penalty after a run, does that tack on the yards of the play? I've often wondered that. <laughs> <laughs> Does that running back get that extra 15 yards? Leatherwood pulls down the high snap, pushes the ball out across midfield, down at the 49-yard line, picks up six yards on the carry. Leatherwood is not stopping. No, that's what you want to see from your top player. He was hurt, got hurt. He's back out on the field. And he's trying to wheel the floor to a W. Leatherwood strolls back to the huddle after getting the play from Coach Schamberger. LaFleur comes out, has a tight set, two receivers wide, takes the snap, hands the ball off to Williams. Williams goes left side off tackle, picks up four yards close to the first down. Which brings up third and very short. Look like third and inches, third and inches. Not even a full yard. But right now, I just think LaFleur, LaFleur is building some momentum. This is the drive that LaFleur needed to have. Eat up some clock. Leatherwood, off left tackle. Picks up the first down and a little more. At the 40. Call it the 39, first down, LaFleur Rattlers. Like you said, they're moving the ball, eating up some clock, and, and they're looking so pretty good right now. Pretty much it looks like so far out of this 61 yards, well, 60 since it was 99, 56 of it was Leatherwood. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's, that's been the story of the night for LaFleur. He's number one's been the one. Gets the call from the sideline, Leatherwood. 
Fakes the handoff, follows, follow his running back into the hole. Another, Another five, six yards again on that carry. I bet you it's hard being a running back at LaFleur. <laughs> <laughs> you never get to touch the ball. He's huh? like, man, when am I going to run the ball, man? <laughs> Hey, but you can't really argue with the results. In other nah, words, he's, he's telling up five, six yards of carry. Again, this time Williams gets the ball, cuts it to the, takes it to the left, cuts back inside. Looks like he got a first down. Yeah. And LaFleur picks up another first, first down. 10, I guess Will, Williams said, boy, I better make, you know, I better make good on this opportunity. Because <laughs> it may never happen again. <laughs> he said, I better on make good on this opportunity. 29 yard line. And he gets the first down. First down, Rattlers from Baldwin County's 29. They have put a drive together, and they're eating up the clock. Great cuddle. Shotgun formation again. Williams to the right of Leatherwood. Leatherwood follows Williams to the Got hole, grease, and he's going to go untouched into the end zone. Touchdown the floor. James Leatherwood sprints 29 yards into the end zone. No flags on the play. Make it official. The floor has tied the game up. And, oh, if you watch the replay, he saw the crease. And he just exploded. Don't look like that ankle was bothering him too much on that run. Boy, he smelled that end zone, and then the drilling started flowing, and he just sprinted to the end zone. But this PAT is going to be pretty important. Yep, they're going for two. Same formation that they scored on. Leatherwood with Williams to his right. Takes a snap, gives the ball to Williams, and he stretches across the goal line. PAT is good. Man, this is a ball game going on here. 99-yard drive. With the score, 30 to 28 LaFleur with eight minutes and eight seconds to go in the ball game. It's a Born burner. Yes, we'll be sir. right back. Go. The floor just take, took the lead, 30 to 28. Hey, Willie, here's some trivia. How many employees work for the Mobile County? Take for, a guess. About 5,000. Ah, close, 7,000. It's one of the largest employees in the state. Now, how about this? How many of them are bus drivers? 200. 560 bus drivers that we have out on the road. And, man, that's a lot of bus drivers. Yes, how many is. schools do they serve? Yeah, I say about, yeah, about 40, 40. Can you believe 90 schools? Wow. Man, a great system, a great group of employees, and a great kickoff. Yes, it was. D'Angelo Stewart puts the ball in the end zone. It'll be first down at the 20-yard line. And it took a gratuitous bounce. To kick it over in the corner like that and actually roll into the end zone and not go out of bounds. <laughs> perfect. It was a perfect kick. Against special teams play was being very special. Oh, yeah. Getting a young man a little air time right there. <laughs> he looks pretty excited about what just happened out there on the field on offense. Baldwin County's turn to try to answer the floor score. Judge takes the snap. Gives it to Cohen. Cohen, he's making something happen. He bounces around, picks up about seven, eight yards on the first down play. It's just like a heavyweight fight right now. <laughs> Cohen says, I'm not <laughs> going to let Leatherwood outdo me. <laughs> Second down and two. The floor switches up on defense. Judge takes a snap. Gives again to Cohen. Cohen, he's met, reverses field, blocked by the quarterback. Big 
Big Ooh. tackle by D. Hogs again. Nice and Hogs has made three big hits on when on defense. Nice open field tackle. Nice open field tackle. And you see Cohen goes to his left side. Wall of Rattlers over there. So he decides I'm pull a Marcus Allen. <laughs> <laughs> And he, it just didn't work out like Marcus Allen. DeAndre Hose corralling the little speedster. Which brings up third down. Looks like four to go for the first down. Judge moves some players around. Fakes the handoff, pulls it, takes it right up the middle. Rambles out to the near 35-yard line. Picks up the first down for Baldwin County. 6.46 to go in this game. Baldwin County at least needs to get in the field goal range. Yep. If they want to win, they got to get in field goal range. Continue to eat up the clock. If you notice, we hadn't really seen much passing in this game. First and ten, Judge with the snap, fakes the option to the left. Picks up. Looks like about seven yards on that carry. And if you notice, Judge did not go out of bounds. Didn't go out of bounds, kept the clock kept the clock moving, it's probably going to work out in his favor. Because right now, they're, they're the team on offense. They're the team with the advantage. They need to eat up clock. Once they score, hoping LaFleur can't now have enough time. Hand off to Cohen. Cohen goes left side. Ray with the tackle. First down. This time, stays in bounds, but the clock will stop with the movement of the chains. And right now, Baldwin County Needing to make something happen. It's making it happen on the ground. Yes, they are. And now they're in LaFleur territory. LaFleur's 48-yard line. Baldwin County spreads the field. The floor player jumps offside. The hard count gets him. Number oh. 51. Man, You're I know that ball. kid. He's not, Encroachment. He's not happy with this. On the defense. It remains first down. Marcus Riggs. I don't think Marcus will appreciate me telling everybody that the penalty was on him. No, he, he's not going to appreciate that. <laughs> no. Direct snap to Judge. Judge bounces Cuts to back. the outside and brings it back up across the 35 down to the 33-yard line. Call it 32. Picks up a first down. Yep. Tigers well, right are rolling. Now, if you notice, both teams have been moving the ball tremendously on the, line, on the ground. It's official timeout on the field. 5.48 to go in this contest. LaFleur leads by two. And welcome back as we come back to play. Cohen stretches out to the right side, but he gets corralled quickly, taken down. Loses about three yards on that carry. It's 
brings up now a second down and about 18. And what happened previously before that is that we had a dead ball, false start penalty, which backed up, backed them up five yards. So, yeah. So right now, if you Lafleur, you like having them in this situation. If you're Baldwin County, as a coach, you're pulling your hair out. <laughs> Baldwin County going in reverse. You need to go forward. Second and 18. Judge with the snap. He looks deep, pulls the ball, tucks it, runs it. Gets across the 35 down to about the original the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Look like he might be a yard short. So it'll be third and 11. He pulls down on the replay. He pulls it down and just tries to get what he can. No one was open. Good coverage by the secondary of the floor. Hopes again on the tackle. 428 and counting. Third down. It the looks man, like 11 yards. And our man of the evening checks in, Chris McCall. Empty backfield. Man in motion. Motion's Cohen. Left. Throws it down the middle and has a chance for interception. Did he get it? Referee said no. He didn't pull it in, but brings up fourth down. And there is a flag on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer against LaFleur. Keeps the ball alive. Wow. They get another shot. But as a Yeah, roughing the passer on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. As a receiver, when you know your quarterback throwing the ball in the middle, you got to do something to protect it. You just don't watch the ball go. <laughs> and whoever the intended receiver was, we, we couldn't see who it was, but he made no effort to go for the ball. But that's all for not. It was roughing the pass against the floor, 15-yard personal foul. Moves the ball down to the 19, 18-yard line of the floor. And Ball County's in business. Empty backfield again. Trips to the right. Man in motion. Judge rolls right, tucks it, runs it. Nobody's over there. Gets down inside the 10-yard line. Close to first down yardage, and he is about a yard shy of the first down. 348 and counting. The floor trying to shuffle in defensive players. And Coach Schemberg has seen enough, calls timeout. Yeah, because you don't want to get a penalty in this situation and put them closer inside your 10. <clears throat> now, depending on how you want to go about it, what some coaches would do would go ahead and let them score. Some coaches would let them score. So you can get the ball back because they haven't shown you that they can stop your offense in the second half. So some coaches would take that chance. Then again, you want to see your defense put up a good stop and hold them to a field goal. I don't see uh, Anthony Schamberg making that decision. <laughs> to score. He was a defensive standout at LaFleur, defensive standout at Alabama State, played a little bit uh, Canadian football so on the defense. So. I'm thinking his defense is going to take the field. They're going to try to make the stop. Oh, yeah. I mean, as a defensive coach, I would do the same. But I'm just saying, some coaches would. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand. Perfect. My offensive coach would tell you defense, move out the way. That actually happened in the uh, Super Bowl a few years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Second and short at the nine-yard line. Man in motion. Judge again. Gives the ball to Cohen. Cohen bounces, picks up the first down, and he's tackled at the five-yard line. First and goal from the five. Clock stops to move the chains. No. 3.35 to go. Nope, that wasn't Cohen. That was number 20, R.J. Stevens. Stevens are making a rare appearance. Yeah, we, we, we believe in feeding the ball to our ones. Stevens again. <laughs> Right. Almost tackled on the, in the backfield, puts his hand down and, and steps his way up inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Right now, they're using Cohen as a decoy. 
And that's a smart move by the Baldwin County coaching staff. You've been giving them the ball all night. You've been feeding it to them. You know they want to stop. Give it to somebody else. Again, this time it's Cohen gets to the goal line. There's no signal yet. Ah, He's to tackled the one. inside the one yard line. This brings up third down. 247 and counting. Third down. Got a couple big plays coming up here. Oh, yeah. Again, Cohen gets it, goes over the top. Touchdown, Baldwin County. 2.28 to go in the game, and Baldwin County takes the lead. Well, 34 you, to 30. You knew they were going to give it to him penny. down there. You knew they were going to give it to him. He's been that workhorse all night. Stevens got him close. You let your workhorse finish. These and this, two points are crucial. Yes, they are. Judge trips to the left, looks left, pumps left, throws left, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Did you make out? Looks like it was Chris Hooks on that intended, he was intended target. This is Mobile to go County. In the fourth quarter here in the game, at the game, uh, Baldwin County retakes the lead, 34 to 30. We'll be right back. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Man, it's one heck of a ball game. Yes, yeah, it's been a very exciting ball game tonight. The floor is kind of seesaw back and forth through the second half. The floor takes a lead. Baldwin takes a lead. Now the floor takes it. Now Baldwin. Recaptures the lead. I think it's been one of those things to where they woke up in the second quarter and it's been, been exciting from that point short on. Short kick. Ball pulled in by one of the upbacks. Looks like it was Graham on the carry. Graham's a little slow to get up. One thing about it, uh, Le, when they scored, LaFleur now has two minutes and 21 seconds to make something happen. Yes, they do. They still got enough time to put the ball on the ground with the chunks of yards that Little Woods been getting all night. And basically, you're only down by four points, so. And looking at the scoreboard, it indicates that LaFleur does have one timeout and the clock stops with the movement of the change after the first down. Leatherwood, back to pass. Looks, throws deep, Stewart can go and get it. Oh, just barely out of his reach. If he was 6'5 instead of 6'4, he would have caught it. <laughs> Leatherwood just displayed an arm on that play. He dropped back and he let it rip. A beautiful pass, beautiful shot. Great and camera work. And he put it right over the shoulder. They get the chance to run a play, but the clock does stop. It's now second down and 10. LaFleur slow to get out the huddle. There's six seconds, five seconds, two seconds to snap it. Leatherwood takes it, rolls out to the left, and he's met by a host of Tigers. Which brings up third down, third down and about eight. Eight, call it seven. Gets the ball out to the 38 yard line. All right now, LaFleur just needs to get a first down. Get a first down, keep the chains moving. Third down, Leatherwood this drops is two, back this again. Is two down territory. He rolls, pumps, rolls out to the right, lets it go deep. Just kind of threw that one away. 
Then we had one more, at least another down to keep playing. Didn't make the it, bad decision that it time. It is a lot of tugging going on between them wide outs and defensive backs down on that field. His initial, his initial receiver was number 18, D'Angelo Stewart. And D'Angelo was having problems getting the, getting, the, um, wide, getting the cornerback off his back. The floor takes their final timeout to discuss this crucial play. 130 to go in the game, 90 seconds. Baldwin County has a four point lead. We'll be right back. Again, with one minute and 30 seconds to go in this contest, you see Baldwin County has a slim lead by four points. It's a crucial fourth down, fourth down and about seven yards for the floor from their own 38. They need to pick up this first down to have a chance. Leatherwood has two running backs in the backfield. Leatherwood fakes the handoff, gives it. They try to do something tricky. The running back still on his feet. He reverses field, gives it back to Leatherwood. Leatherwood looks to load up to throw it. There's Stewart wide open downfield. He throws it and it falls incomplete. A big stand, way to stay at home for the defense there of Baldwin County. He had a lot of stuff going on on that play. It was a lot of stuff going on. You also have a player down on the play. Play starts to the left. Somehow, it Number 25, Darius Polk. Darius Polk ends up with the ball. He pitches it back to Leatherwood. Leatherwood was looking for a receiver to be behind everybody, but no one came, no one was there. For a, for a short while there, uh, D'Angelo Stewart was wide open around about the 40-yard line, and if he could have just got his shoulders squared up and he could have made that pass, but uh, there was a lot of pressure on him. Uh, they tried the the old flea flicker, you know, which kind of blew up on them right at the beginning of the play. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. Baltimore County is going to get the ball, and right now they're attending to a LaFleur player. And we'll take a quick timeout ourselves. Be right back. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got our progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So, how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. The quality of education that I received from the Mobile County Public School System really prepared me for global success. Being uh, an international opera singer, I get to travel all across the world. And one of the most important aspects about that is being able to communicate and work with people. And the Mobile County Public School System really equipped me to be greatly successful worldwide. And welcome back as uh, Dwayne Hill has been escorted off the field. They're holding his arm pretty gingerly. And Baltimore County will take over on downs at the big stop. Looks like they're going to line up in a victory formation and escape with a four-point win. 107 and counting to go in the ball game. This was a hard-fought game by both teams. It was exciting. It got real exciting and real good there from the second quarter on in. It's a hard fought game, just like you said, back and forth. And probably the best offensive formation that anyone could ever run. 
Yeah, if you're the winning coach, you'd love to see that formation. You'd love to use that formation. But LaFleur has a lot to build on. This was a close, hard-fought battle. They were in it. But it just didn't work out the way they planned it. LaFleur obviously disappointed. Baldwin County, I'm sure, happy for the win. Uh, 12 seconds to go. May not have to snap the ball again. And they will get the win. With the score, 34 to 30, Baldwin County comes across the bay and defeats the LaFleur Raptors. One of the things I like to see here at the end of the game is a sportsmanship. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, talk about All right, it's final. As a player shake hand at the middle of the field, Baldwin County defeats LaFleur 34 to 30, and the score indicates the type of game this was, a kind of high-scoring game, high-intensity game. Yes, they both. it was exciting from the second quarter on. First quarter, I think the weather had a lot to do with holding everybody back. I think everybody was just trying to get a feel for it, but the minute the rain stopped, it just was a scoring frenzy everywhere. And uh, – both team, both sides of the ball was able to, to do things. The defense of the floor showed up early in the uh, second half, and and they played well. But uh, Baldwin County, with special teams, made some special plays. Yes, they did. Block, punt, kickoff, return. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's what they call special. And, and what can you say about Dwayne Cohen and, and James Netherwood? The two number ones went back and forth. and. And uh, the one from it, across the bay got the win. Yep. Two number ones. Okay. Again, tonight's final is Baldwin County 34, the floor 30. Thank you for joining us on the Mobile County Public School System Thursday night football. And we now join Welcome Back Carter, already in progress on MeTV.